I think that's a pipeline that we need to re revisit because it's already been reinstituted in our communities. It just needs to be resourced correctly. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and members, again, just be mindful of time because we do have a lot of folks who are, that's a, no, no worries. Uh, next, we'll hear from Councilmember Kalos. Thank you, Chair Traeger, for your advocacy for guidance counselors, psychologists, and social workers in every school. You're welcome to stand up. I want to associate myself with those comments. For five years, I've been focused on school seats. This will, of course, continue. Chancellor, I get three minutes to ask one year's worth of questions, and you don't get a buzzer, so pencils out. Please be ready to answer each and every question in detail. Today, I'll focus on school seats, 3K, pre-K, gifted and talented, transportation, civics, and segregation. I appreciate that we're on track for 1,100 pre-K seats on the Upper East Side five years after pre-K for all was announced. There were 2,577 children born in 2014 who are eligible for pre-K in 2019. How many four-year-olds applied for pre-K as of Monday's deadline in my district? It took five years to scale up for 4K. What is DOE's plan for 3K in 2022 in less than three years. Uh, on to the topic of transportation. Uh, Houston, where you were previously chancellor, has an app to track buses. I've now written the law to mandate that you bring that app to New York City uh, by the new school year in September. Are you on track? On the issue of civics, this is the first year I missed high school voter registration day because it was held on a Jewish holiday. Will you support legislation to mandate voter registration in the classroom on days that aren't Jewish holidays so that Jewish students can register too? And would you couple that with mock voting? On the topic of uh, desegregation, you are the chancellor for a school system that is more segregated today than it was before Brown versus the Board of Education was decided. I have schools that are 95% students of color across the street from schools that are two-thirds Caucasian. When I have asked DOE to invest in my schools with students in almost entirely of color, you have truncated the schools, then co-located co a charter in that same school. Chancellor, your Department of Education is actually making segregation worse in my district. Will you invest in public-private partnerships for my schools in need, along with rolling out honors programs and gifted and talented programs to desegregate. I'd like to associate myself with the comments of Council Member Robert Cornegy. As we come upon redistricting in 2020, will you move forward with your districting school districts like mine to desegregate? When we have limited integration, will you commit to personally taking on racism? Today, Tyler Davis, a student at Wagner Middle School, is home today because other students put a noose of yarn around his neck and taunted him saying, this is what your ancestors went through. Will you personally come with me to meet with Tyler and his mother, Allison Davis, to let them know that you will make our school safe for every race, religion, and creed? Yes. <laughs> that's a no brainer. Absolutely. That's absolutely unacceptable. So let's go right now. No Thank more you. questions. We're <laughs> After the hearing, seriously. After the no, I'm serious. That is absolutely unacceptable. So absolutely, I look forward to doing that. I'm going to do my best to answer your questions, uh, and I want to congratulate you on articulating them so well. You get an A for preparation. Uh, 3K pre-K. Look, a lot of work goes into 3K pre-K, as you know. Uh, what we will do is come back to you with a detailed plan of when we're looking at the 3K seats. Um, the four-year-olds, do you have the number? Yeah, we can come back with a specific number of four-year-olds as of Monday that um, applied for the for the the pre-K seats. Transportation. Look, let me be let me be clear about this. And we've met with uh, Chairman Traeger uh, and his staff and have updated them on this. Um, we are in the process right now of an RFP for a GPS and tracking application. Uh, and the reason we are in an RFP for that is that we could go with what the current standard is currently. Uh, it's also used in our snow plows. It's used in other things. Let me tell you, I'm an educator, and I've worked in transportation systems. It doesn't serve our need. We're not going to use a screwdriver to hammer a nail. So we're going out for an RFP, and what we want, there are apps 
and GPS systems out there because I've seen them that can give us the functionality that we want. So our goal is to do it right, not to do it by an arbitrary deadline, an important arbitrary deadline of September. That being said, we're working with all due haste to make sure that we can get that done by September. I will not publicly state that it will be done by September because that would mean just accepting what we currently have in place and trying to make it work. And then next year at this time, we would be having a conversation about why is the application so substandard, doesn't have functionality, we're not able to do, and then the list of things we can't do. We're gonna do it right. Uh, and that may mean that we may not make the September deadline, but it means that when we implement, it will be the best in class and the best in market, because I think that's what our residents deserve. Um, in terms of vo voter, registr vo voter registration and mock voting in civics, um, I found out that, that we were set up um, on a holiday. Um, so again, we're paying attention to when that's gonna happen this coming year and as we go forward. Uh, we don't want any of our students not to be able to have those opportunities because of a holiday. Uh, that's the most basic of respect for our student body. So we're looking to make sure that doesn't happen. And I think, look, as a former American government teacher, social studies teacher, I think that every student should participate in mock voting. This year in particular with upcoming federal elections, some state elections, uh, some local elections, it's gonna be very important for our students to know what the issues are and then have a, a, a way to express uh, their participation. Um, investing in schools, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Uh, as I mentioned in my testimony, the lens through which we are looking at everything that we do, and in some cases, people nod their head and say, okay, that makes sense. In some people, some cases, people will shake their head and say, I can't believe he's actually saying that. Like you wanna revamp how we admit kids to certain schools, you're darn right, because they are not equitable. They are not fair. And nowhere have you seen this more egregious than our historically underserved communities. And there are communities in this city, in specific neighborhoods, in every borough, where those communities have not had an investment of resources, not had an investment in attention, and have not had an investment in helping those communities do well by their students. That has changed. And where people used to be at the bottom of the list, they're moving to the top of the list. One example of that is in the recently announced Bronx Plan that we did through an agreement with uh, the UFT and the DOE. What we did is we specifically looked at a number, and I mentioned this in my testimony at the beginning, we looked at a number of indicators, and through the number of indicators we looked at, we identified a portfolio of schools that we could honestly and sincerely say had historically been underserved. And what we did is we invited those school communities to apply to be part of this grant process. We had the principal and the chapter leader agree to sign together if they were interested. We we're gonna give them training around their root cause analysis, but what, more importantly, as they develop their plan, there are resources associated with being able to implement their plans. In addition to that, we've done a full-scale walkthrough through those campuses that have agreed to be part of it. So we're not just looking at, do you have enough technology, which we are. We're not just looking at, does your facility look good, which we are. But we're also asking fundamental questions like, do you have the uh, appropriate marketing for what you're doing in your, in your schools? What are the enrichment programs in your schools? What are the partnerships and how could we facilitate greater partnerships with community-based organizations in your schools? And I will tell you that in the communities, there are 50 schools that are a part of this initial group. They are fired up, they are excited because for the first time, many of them have said, I actually am getting what I need without having to beg, borrow, and steal for that. So to your question about are we going to invest in schools that have historically been underserved, the answer is an unqualified, unmitigated, absolute yes. We Will are. you invest in those schools that are underserved even if Council they are Mateos, in a district? This is your final question because we do yes, need to but I, it's just to clarify. Okay. What I'm saying is I, I have a school that is 95 percent students of color. These kids are from all over New York City. They are part of communities that have been underserved. As far as I know, you have not been to my district or toured any of my schools. My concern is that a school that is serving underserved <coughs> populations is being overlooked because it happens to be on the Upper East Side. And most of the schools in my district actually serve children from underserved communities throughout the city. And I feel that they're being overlooked. Have you been to any of the schools? Will you focus on schools 
that are serving the underserved? So we're looking at schools that are serving all of our students from different parts of the city. So that's one of the things we're looking at. Have you been to my district? Councilman Kalos, I will say this to you. There are 1,800 schools in the New York City Department of Education. If I visit one school per day, excluding weekends, I'll, it'll take me nine years to visit every school. So I will absolutely make it a point to come visit some schools. In fact, I'll invite you to come with me after we go visit that young man. Thank you. You bet. Yes, and uh, thank you. Actually, I will note the Chancellor has been visiting a number of schools, and I definitely appreciate you following.